Hey, good morning. <laughs> hey, um, we had your other half in here yesterday, Lane. Um, yep. Now she's an inspiration. She, does she just give you pep talks every single morning or what? Ah, it's just relentless, you know. I call her, I call her little baby Jesus because she's just trying to help everyone. <laughs> ah, it's like, how did you two meet? Oh, well, we were set up on a blind date. Um, not, not too long after uh, our original singer, Michael Hutchins, died. Right. Um, John Stevens became our singer. And yep. um, he uh, set us up on a blind date and it went horribly bad. Neither of us were interested. All my friends are going, you're dating a surfer? Hey, you know, how does that work? It, it, uh, did, it doesn't necessarily marry, but... Right. I, hate, I hate the sun, the sand, you know, the surf. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty weird. But anyway, we, we just found a whole lot of stuff that we connected with and uh, immense respect. Even though when I first met her, I had no idea who she was. She was five-time world champion at the time. Um, had no idea. Uh, but anyway, we, we just found all this common ground and... Uh, it, it was absolutely not love at first sight, but now it's, uh, you know, it's complete, full soul, physical, mental love. Um, I heard there was, a, there was a moment with Lemoncello that made it all better. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, that was a turning point <laughs> on, on the first date. Um, yeah, we went, I mean, she took me 10 pin bowling first, and then we went to this restaurant down at uh, DY, which is a northern beaches um, suburb here near where we live. And uh, went to this restaurant and, uh, you know, she went to the bathroom and was looking for a window to escape. And I'm sitting at the table going, should I just leave some money and do a runner? Um, anyway, the owner came over and sat down with a bottle of lemoncello and Lane, you know, disappointingly came back to the table. And we uh, finished off the lemoncello and, I don't know, it must have broken the ice, shall we say. Um, and no, yeah, so here we are 18 years later. That is an ARIA award. That's Look at the, that. uh, the Hall of Fame uh, award, which we got in 2001. So we were inducted into the ARIA Hall of Fame, well, right. nearly, nearly 20 years ago. How was the journey of In Excess, you know, mate? From like a going... little daggy band practising in a garage, you know, all going to school together kind of thing, to, you know, literally the, the, the top of the world. Yeah, is, I mean, we knocked Michael Jackson off the number one spot in America. So... You know, um, but yeah, look, what a what an amazing life, and I'm so grateful. Um, and you know, uh, to still be alive is really good too. Uh, it, yeah. it, I pinch myself often. Uh, funnily enough, you know, I I kind of tend to forget these days what I've achieved and who I am, and you know, uh, and it takes me back a uh, back a little bit when people want a selfie with me, and I go, oh, that's right, yeah, yeah. I'm that guy, um, am I? What do you, what do you think? You guys were so successful. What made it? It was just... a number of things. I think. I think it was our passion and our belief. Yeah. yeah. Um, our belief that we, if we kept going, we would make it at some point. I mean, we had time to develop back then as as a band, as an act, and and as uh, our music and all that. So, um, I would definitely say um, great songwriting from predominantly Michael and Andrew. Yeah. Um, and, and a hell of a lot of hard work. I mean, we toured and toured and toured. Some of the tours went for nine months nonstop, you know, throughout North America and Europe and South America. And um, we just kept at it. And I think, I think that's what it was. I mean, we certainly did our 10,000 hours. Um, uh, but, you know, look, most of all, it was our, our belief in, in, in us as a band and that, that we had something different and, and kind of... Uh, you know, taking no prisoners. We just we just did what it took, and uh, we created music we love to listen to. It was mm. all just very sort of simple and authentic. It was not preconceived. We weren't trying to be anything other than what we were. Um, and yes, we had a really great frontman. Are you the band's archivist? Look, I, I started keeping a diary in late 1979, um, we and started. we changed the name to In Excess in late 1979. So from that point, um, I just started keeping daily journals, um, yeah. and I, I hand wrote them into uh, diaries up until 95, I think it was. And ever, ever since then, I've been doing uh, electronic, you know, um, entries. Uh, um, so I've literally got uh, a daily entry, you know, for every day of my life since ni not late 1979. It, it must be good just to relive some of those moments every now and then. Though, yeah, well. I, I do. To uh, have a look at, we, we did a TV show a few years ago um, to find a singer uh, in America with uh, Mark Burnett. Lane and I started watching it the other day and I thought, oh, I know, I'll get my diary out and have a look, 
you know, at, at what I was writing when, as we watched each episode. Wow. It was really, yeah, it was really, really interesting because uh, I had forgotten most of it, you know. Yeah, yeah it, was, it, might, it sort of gave the whole watching the show a whole kind of different light. It was amazing. I'm just, how, how was it for you and Michael to work with three brothers? <laughs> yeah, look, it was interesting. They were three very different guys, um, you know, uh, all extremely talented and and all that, but I mean, we you know we we grew up together. I used to stay at the Farris, yeah. at the Farris's house every weekend before in excess before yeah, yeah. and uh, so you know um, they they were, they were like we were like family as well. Um, so I you know I think the beauty of all that too was that all the differences we may or you know a lot of bands have when they're working together we're all knocked out when we we're kids um so if ever there was any heated discussion it never was personal and it never ended yeah. up you know it never ended up sort of being a problem or um we just we'd just talk shit out if we had yeah. to you know it must be pretty good uh, to have an impact globally like south america got. was definitely one of our our absolute or my absolute favorite places to go it was nuts um you know we were the first uh, international band ever to play in Argentina in 1984, wow. just after the you know the militia government came down, uh, and we'd had a number one hit there with Original Sin. We went over and performed at this big stadium. They'd never had you know outside of South American acts in Argentina. First band to play in Mexico City um, since the Doors in '84, and it was like uh, you know the, some nights it was like. Beatles footage, the screaming yeah. and the, the 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 chanting and the the singing from the audience often drowned out our really loud stage gear. You know, <laughs> it was mental. Um, it was so much fun, and and you know, just it's so great to to bring so much joy to so many people. I mean, I still have people from all over the world running into them. I think I've met just about everyone that was at our Wembley, you know, Wembley Stadium gig because <laughs> I've had so many people over the years come up and say, I was at that gig, you know. It's I mean, awesome. And, you know, that people remember and, and that it's a part of their, you know, their life and, and often for people, you know, a, a particular song has a story for them, you know. Uh, whether and that's, it was their, that's the beauty of music, right? Yeah, like, in whether general. it was their wedding, you know, their wedding song or the song they first had sex to or, you know. <laughs> Hey, good morning. Hey, um, we had your other half in here yesterday, Lane. Um, yep. Now she's an inspiration. She, does she just give you pep talks every single morning or what? Ah, oh, it's just relentless, you know. I call her I call little baby Jesus because she's just trying to help everyone. <laughs> oh, it's like, how did you two meet? 